All right. First up, we have a, a success story from New South Wales this time. So let's give them a big round of applause. Their names are Dan and Leanne. Come on up here. Hey there. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good day. Good day. <laughs> okay, so you're. Uh, you can tell us your story. Yep. Yeah. It's not nervous up here, is it? Very nervous. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether you can hear me or not, though. Yeah, we should be on. Have you got me now? Ah, that's Shawnee down the back. That's his problem over there. Huh? We'll try a different mic. There that's we better. go. Good day, right. everybody. How are you? <laughs> okay, so you guys. Um, generally poking around the New South Wales area or you snuck up into Queensland there for a while? We've done a lot of miles. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a lot of miles. Now, you say they're emerging from the box. Why do you say that? Very much so. I think everybody in the room here would be well aware that real estate has always been the greatest vehicle for wealth. Mm -hmm. I certainly knew it. I took it on board right from the very beginning mm -hmm. but never had any real understanding of just how to use it or how to get on on really on track. And I think, you know, us coming through into the workforce and things, you know, that, that's our mantra. You, you, you get a good education, you get a good job, and now that you're successful. That's, that's what we were taught. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So trying to break that barrier down, break the box down. That's right. Yeah. And so for us, the first part was you've got to get the education. Yep. So we went to uni. Mm-hmm. One of us Leanne, Leanne graduated beautifully. <laughs> and I came out enlightened. <laughs> Study was not for me. So you actually became a real estate agent. I did. And then you I became did. a cop. It was the only way that I could see to get ahead in, re in, in, in w real estate wealth. Look at that smart young man there. Look at him. <laughs> I, 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 I was smooth. I love the hair. I was smooth. You were smooth, were you? I was. I was. <laughs> but the reality was I got the job. Yep. I got the education. When I found the house that I wanted, I went to the bank and said, can yep. I have a loan? And they said, mate, you haven't got a secure job. <laughs> so to answer the question, I needed a secure job and I got one. So you got became a cop. I did. Okay. And Leanne became an audiologist. Yeah. Took off to Queensland. Yep. Where every smart person goes. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of commuting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ended up, um, you know, getting married to the university sweetheart. Well, no, 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 not no. Yet, no. What happened was we both went to the same university yep. and never met. Oh, really? Okay. And it was nine years later when I was gate crushing a party in Sydney that he wasn't even going to that we met. So <laughs> then he's Sydney. He wasn't there knocking on the door. Oh, sorry, the noise is too loud in this, <laughs> this no, party. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, we live next door for three years. <laughs> I didn't know each other. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So <laughs> I was on the Sunshine Coast and he was in Sydney. Yeah. And that's when we decided it would be a good idea to start dating. <laughs> Geographically incompatible. Fantastic. <laughs> so how did we meet then? Mm. Well, that was just it. I was a GD's, general duties, flat foot copper. Yep. Maroubra, eastern suburbs. Yep. I went to a party specifically, and you wouldn't believe it, it was time for me to find a wife. <laughs> oh, God. So you went to the so party, went to party that I wasn't with go that to. attitude. I did. I did. <laughs> like the farmer found a wife, the cop needs a wife. Pretty much. <laughs> I didn't know she was in Queensland at the time, though. Yeah. That did complicate it. She was asking how she you met Dim. No. <laughs> oh right. It was me I was talking about, not her. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You've already got one. <laughs> Again, it all came down to knowing that I needed the education. Yep. We'd pushed out a lot of years. We did a heap of things. A lot of people, a lot of the things that we did, people sort of said, what are you doing that for? Who does that? Who buys a block of land on Russell Island? <laughs> Everybody heard the doom stories there. Yep. I went looking for an education is the reality of it. Okay. And uh, I found somebody, wasn't quite my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And then I got this magic little email from Knowledge Source okay. that said, Dempner's running a free one day event. Came down to it. <laughs> Leanne had, a, had her, her, her own job. I was coming as a handbrake to keep <laughs> him in line because he's been to a couple of these types of events okay. before and I didn't want him to get overly excited. Yes. So practical, you know, 
Right. How did I go? heard you talk for half an hour and I was like, oh, my God, this woman's got so much <laughs> to say that I need to hear. <laughs> and at morning tea, he sa- I said, dear, no, you're not signing up for Ultimate. <laughs> We're doing quantum because I need to learn this too. <laughs> so there you go. Great handbrake you got. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I use it when I need to. <laughs> but she also knows that one of my mantras has always been he who hesitates is lost. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So you've got this little property here. Um, there was this pre DB, was it? Yeah, all yep. three of those are. Yeah. The, uh, the big pictures one in Tamworth, <laughs> of all places. Tamworth, yeah, so a few country yep. properties and bits and pieces, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so you had a little bit, um, chugging along, doing okay. What happened? Well, that, the little picture on the bottom there is Russell Island. That's one of those challenges when the neighbours do a <laughs> clean-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Push it on all nows. <laughs> that, uh, that, that was pretty heartbreaking. Similarly, the house above, that's when we lived in Dubbo. And then uh, we, again... Without Properties just kind of happened along the way, more than anything. Yeah. Well, we knew it was the right vehicle, but yeah. we didn't understand how to do things. That yeah. house was probably the worst house in one of the best streets, mm-hmm. but not understanding Good. or knowing the market meant that, and again, being one of those country people who doesn't throw things out that aren't broken, we didn't renovate the way the market could or yeah. should have been. Okay. Yeah. And that's an interesting point that you bring up there. A lot of country people are like that, you know. It's just, you know, you got to save it for, mm. I might need that one day. Yep. And uh, you end up with a shed full of crap. <laughs> yeah, so we, did, we bought the farm. So you bought the farm. Four sheds. <laughs> for more crap. Oh, yeah, Four sheds with too. crap. <laughs> okay, so the original position pre um, I Love Real Estate was that you had a, you had a few properties They'd kind of been acquired along the way because you could, you knew you had to, but you weren't, didn't have a real plan of attack. That's right. That's yeah. right. Mistakes, I guess, were buying in your own name? Buying in your own names, nothing in any uh, was no really structures, protected. No yep. structures. Same yep. bank. Cross securitised, good yep. old. Mm. Yep. All the normal stuff. And yep. the banks then all, always said to us, no, you just did one this year. Yeah. Just wait. Even wait. though we were in a better financial position because something might be positive. <laughs> but they're like, no, you did one this year. <laughs> Come back next year. So what were the fears back then? I guess the greatest fear related specifically to whether we were doing the right thing. Yeah, the we, unknown. We grew up in that percept- with that perception that you'll never be able to afford a property in Sydney mm-hmm. or you'll never be able to afford something else. Yeah. So we never looked. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Mm. And how your perception of things really directs your overall outcome. Very much so. Yeah. 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 That's the thing with the box that we were talking about. We've been in that box that everybody else's rules, you don't do this, you don't do this. The bank said, the friend said, the father said, whatever. All that stuff. And what you were talking about earlier really Mm. resonated with me because you're in this box, you think, but then you find out there is no lid. Like, you can get out any time you like. You just have to... It's like the jar of fleas. Yes. That's exactly All you've got to do is, is, is uh, put the lid on for one generation, then every generation thereafter will never jump above the lid because it's been passed down that that's your limit. That's your height limit. That's as far as you can go. It's an interesting experiment if you want to look it up. Mm. So this was your position. You did have six properties, which was good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You had a considerable amount of equity, 1.4, so you, yep. hadn't, you yep. hadn't done everything wrong. No, no, certainly not. We'd, we'd, bought, we'd bought some good properties and done well with them. We and couldn't you couldn't understand why you deliberately deli- buy something that... Was negative. Well, was negative that's because most time. people, that's what tell but you to do. We couldn't afford to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it had been built up over a long period of time. Oh, very much so, yeah. 18 years. So if you wanted to fast track things, you had yep. to be doing things yep. better, yep. quicker, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Yep. The reality was I knew 25 years ago where I wanted to be in 20 years. Yeah. But when that 20 years came around, I wasn't where I wanted to be. <laughs> Dreams got lost. So, um, health, time, not good. Mm-mm, no. Mm. Um, in one space there, within a space of six years, we moved five times and we had four children. Yeah. No family support. <laughs> and Dan had a job that, like, have any of you heard that I've been everywhere man song? Well... You have. Where we was were, it? We were based in Dubbo, but I worked at Cobra, Ning and Warren, Narrow, oh. Peak Hill, Parks, Forbes, Lake and Jellygo, <laughs> Walgut, Lightning Ridge, Birkenbrew, Warren. And he had to take the family car. Collar and a bride too. Yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't have a courthouse. Oh, car. there you go. Everybody from Collie went to Walgut. <laughs> yeah, it was fun times. 
Okay, so no time, kids, health suffering, everything's going on. So what was the plan of attack after, after the Isle of Real Estate Bootcamp? We needed to sort our crap out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leanne works in medical. There's a big risk mm -hmm. of being sued. Yep. Or I work in the cops. There's a big risk of being sued. Yep. We've got a farm. The cow walks on the road. Big There's a big risk, risk of, of getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tenants. You know, the crosses are securitised. So we spent the next period of time just working that stuff out. Okay. And, uh, Gift and loan backs, all the rest of it happening. That, that's yep. right. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this house, for example, was the second house that we bought. Mm -hmm. And um, we looked at renovations. It was a 970 square metre block. But the position of the house meant we couldn't get a driveway down the side of it. The sewer line in the middle of the backyard buggered other things up. We looked at renovating. Again, the figures didn't stack up. Yeah. Uh, we looked at a cosmetic reno. They didn't stack up. So we sold it as it was. Okay. And we made good coin on it. Okay. But that was just because of the amount of time that we put into it. Yeah. And only, yeah, for a long That's time. That's right. Long period time. of time. It was the time. Okay. So we got rid of things that weren't in the right name, weren't structured properly, and there were really not a lot of upside, even though it was positive. Yeah. Um, that would then give you the ability to be able to do the gift and loan back and get that. Yep. Not this one. Not this, this one. This and I uh, haven't told you about the renovation that we started on no, the farm. No, 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 don't tell her that one. <laughs> <laughs> we started the renovation before we came to the first Dimpner event. Oh, okay. And realised that borrowing for a home reno is just Was not, not a sensible. really good idea, no. So we so sold this one. Oh, uh, that's what you did. <laughs> yeah, so that ate that. All right, deal number two. This, however, was just that asset protection deal. Okay. We sold this little, uh, this little gem, it was a block of three units that we had. But again, we had a real problem early 2017 with vacancy rates. Mm -hmm. The vacancy rate in Armadale had mm -hmm. gone up to 6-7% or thereabouts. And um, thank goodness for us, we'd sort of been to one of your events. And through that we realised that if we furnished it, threw a bit of new carpet in, new coat of paint, we'd get the tenants. Yeah, put the we'd rent up. We'd get the tenants <laughs> at a higher rent. With the occupancy, we could argue that the value of the property had gone up, and we did just that. Okay. And uh, so we ended up selling it, admittedly, at a 7.7% return on value. Mm hmm But um, on the that... Mm -hmm. Gave you another 183 grand. It did. Mm hmm It did. Mm -hmm. And it freed you up to be able to, to restructure your portfolio. It did. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what else happened? So debt reduction? We paid down debt. Yep. The bank let us keep a, uh, a, a good portion of good portion of it. 100 mm -hmm. and something K, mm -hmm. and uh, that allowed us to do the deed yep. of gift, borrow it back, mm -hmm. gift it, et cetera, et cetera. And that gave us a cracking opportunity at a, uh, at a, at a, at a friendly debt, yes. asset protection debt. Great. Okay. But in the meantime, of course, I knew that I wanted another real deal. Mm. I wanted to do something that meant something. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a subdivision. Mm -hmm. And I, I, oddly enough... If you ask the universe for something, it will provide. It may not be what you ask, and I know that you said you wanted some time off and you broke a leg. Oh, broke a jaw. Oh, <laughs> jaw. There you go. I thought it was a leg. No, it's broke a jaw. <laughs> One of my work colleagues, desperate to retire, wanted to get out. He had got his A team together. Good. Unfortunately for him, his A team wasn't an A team. It was a C team. Mm -hmm. He got the advice that he needed to put a subdivision in. And then sell it with a D, as a DA approved site. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. Mm. What he didn't take into account was that the sewer line was two k's away, <laughs> and that was what the DA required. Yeah, yeah. So an extension of the sewer, which is very expensive. Extremely. Mm. And he increased his price because he felt it was obviously worth a lot more with the approved DA. So he jacked his price up, asking, and sat on the market for the best part of two years yeah, without would. an offer. Without an inspection, he just sat there. Mm. And he came whinging to the office one day and said, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how it's going. I don't know what to do. So he was a mate of yours in, at work? He was. He was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sort of had it ticking in the back of my mind that perhaps a joint venture might work, which again was one of those things that I never, ever contemplated doing. There was no way could you trust somebody else. And when you work, I mean, without being negative, when you work where I work, you become extremely... Suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust other people. That's You've the downside <laughs> of the trade. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's one of those downsides. And, of course, I said to Chris at the time, mate, what you need is a partner. And instantly his shield came up, the uh, same as it always does. What are you talking about? Who? 
I'm, sh- I'm sure he could feel my hand in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality was he couldn't retire. He couldn't move on. He'd bought a new house uh, thinking he was going to sell overcommitted, this. Overcommitted, yeah. He'd bought a new caravan <laughs> thinking he was going to sell this. He'd bought a new four-wheel drive to pull the caravan. <laughs> the poor bugger was buggered. Yeah. I mean, he could <laughs> <laughs> you know. So he went away and had a think and he came back 24 hours later and said, look, um, we'd, we'd have to do, it'd have to be in writing, right? <laughs> and I said, mate, absolutely. It, it, we, it, it will be legal. It will be straight up and down. I made it clear to him that I needed at least 25% return. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the deal wouldn't work. And he said, mate, that, that, that's fine, but, um, well, actually... What did you end up getting? Well, what he ended up saying was, no, I'm not happy with the 25% return on your outlay. We'll go 50-50 on the profits. After the 25%. After the 25%. There you go. Good, good. So I did the figures, and um, they stacked up. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we've pushed it through. The titles are now with council, waiting for... Or the, assess- the planning assessment's now with council. And again, this is one of those lessons in life. Worry about the things you can control. Don't worry about the things you can't. Mm. They will eventually get it <coughs> dished out. But in the meantime, we've sold the house on one hectare for mm-hmm. 530000 What did you pay for the whole thing? What did he, what did he pay for it? The cost of the development's 196 <laughs> Good. The deal is we'll go 50-50 on the blocks as they go until the debt's paid out. Uh-huh. So on the sale of a house, our share of the sale when we settle is 256000 That's only on one of them. That's right. <laughs> good. But he gets what he wanted and yeah. a bit more too. Good, so good. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very good. So nice little wonder to kick things off there. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely and, fantastic. you know, get things in writing, suspicion, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, win-win situation for everybody. On title issue, you receive $258,000, but that's only on part of it. Yeah, that's right. Lots more to come. That's right. On the other property. That 258, that pays the debt out. Yep. Gives us our 25%. Yep. And, and then, then, and then it's then upside go, on all the rest. That's right. Very good. So what's the next one you've got here then? Well, sadly, that's, I mean, that's a picture of an aerial photo of the farm. That's mm-hmm. where we live. Bit dry. Yeah. Bit dry. dry. And if anybody says to you, farming's great, farming's romantic, I'll tell you what, sometimes it's a mugs game. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. It's, it, it's hard going. That's, that's very brown. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been hard the last uh, couple of years. The seasons mm. just haven't been the way they used to be. So obviously farm is difficult to make money, particularly small farms. Yeah. You know, it's a lifestyle. It's not, a, it's not a, an investment really. No. no. Um, so how do we turn around a lifestyle decision into a profit-making centre? That's right. Mm-hmm. When we bought it, we knew that it was approved for ecotourism. Mm-hmm. Conveniently for us, we live right beside a national park. Yep. Park. We live right beside the gorge. Yep, and, lovely. And the waterfall. Mm-hmm. And we've got that park landlocked with our farm. Okay, so no one can get in by except, except through you. going through our farm. Okay, so it's obviously a holiday park. We got it zoned right yet? Why not? We're already zoned. It was zoned right when we bought it. Okay, very good. So cabins are going in there? So we've got, uh, we've got the DA and again... <coughs> You can't control bureaucrats because it's the same council. <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting on the DA approval. But our, our lodgement meeting went beautifully. They, th- they thought this was a great idea. And um, we expect approval, well, so any that'll day now for turn five. turn something that was negative into positive. Oh, well and truly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. We, the mar- we've, done, uh, we've done a bit of a market analysis. Of course, it's a little difficult because there's nothing really to compare. No. But the nearest stuff that we can find is that uh, we can be very confident of 50% occupancy, so three days a week. Mm-hmm. The market rate for one of these cabins we anticipate to be reasonably between 180 and 220 a week, uh, a night. Yep. Conveniently for us, that's going to conceivably generate a... C- cash flow of 88000 a year. So what's the minimum. game plan here? Is, is your overarching goal income replacement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what's your target figure? Mm-hmm. Well, and oddly enough, I, I mean, I've, I've talked to Greg about that, spoken to Greg about that. It was 110 k because that's what I'm on in the cops. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're working with Greg now? Yeah. To achieve that? Yeah. And we're on track? Very much so. Okay. Very much so. Very good. So that'll, that'll put a big dent in it? 
it'll make a massive dent in it. Yeah. And we've already got a and couple of other little ideas and of course now I'm looking at it and thinking, geez, I've shot too low saying 110. <laughs> well, that's the first peg in the sand. <laughs> we can move the, we'll move the peg when you get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's, what's the overarching driver here for you? Well, the funny thing is, I mean, I joined the COP specifically to help people. Sorry, myself. I needed that secure job. Yeah. But after joining, I found that, you know what, I really like helping people. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest things with what I've done has been just Because you cop a that. lot of shit too. Oh, we do. We do. Mm. And the armchair critics out there are just, just incredible. Mm. Everybody has an opinion about the way you should be doing it mm -hmm. or the way you could have done it. Mm. Um, but uh, with all due respect to them, try standing in the shoes. Yeah, that's right. You know. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's been tremendous. We've had um, the opportunity to focus specifically on what we think matters yep. because in our, ultimately it's really not what you've got it's who you influence it's who you're with it's who you help it's it, those are the things that really count and uh that's see realistically that's give yourself a year 18 months maybe um you will be in a position to have the choice to leave work yeah yeah you know so that that's a massive turnaround huge huge would you leave work well that's the funny <laughs> That's the funny thing. Two years ago, I was Doug, I was, I was Doug one. Graham one. Mm -hmm. I want to get out right now. I, yep. I, 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 I'm not in a happy place. Yep. But the reality is that right now, I'm now Graham two saying, yeah, you know, now that I can see the exit plan, now that I can see the strategy, now that I now can see these things. Now it's not a have things, to. It's no longer a have to. That's right. Now I can. And, I mean, that, that, that young fellow there that's standing beside me in the photo. Adores him. That poor little <laughs> bugger. He's, 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 got, uh, he's, he's got a pretty fair baggage pile to carry and um, that, that helping that kid has really turned him around. Um, so that's not your child? No, no, that's, that's a kid who, uh, who was having a bad day mm. one day. Mm. That's fantastic and that's, that's the reward, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So um, the flow on effect obviously is not just for you but the flow on effect to your family and friends and everything else of the education that you've decided to take on board. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been huge and it... The, the, I mean, the funny thing is, it's only when you realise that um, it's your own self that holds you back mm -hmm. because you put mm -hmm. those shields up and you get used to having those shields up. You get used to being in that box and the weight of the world makes the box smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we came to the Millionaire we're even, Within event, we went to... Pip. We ended up signing up with Pip mm -hmm. and she really showed me in particular just how small my box had got. Yeah. Um... And so it's really important to, in fact, invest in yourself because when push comes to shove, we are our own, as you said earlier, our own worst enemy. And we come into the world alone, we leave it alone, what we do in the middle is up to us. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm, that's exactly right. So the flow and fix. So what are your learnings out of this process? <laughs> come on, Leanne, you haven't said much. <laughs> what are your learnings out of the process? Do your fees <laughs> <laughs> Don't paint the walls. What did you call them? Let's have a paint scheme that will stab them in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be bold. <laughs> I wanted it to be bold. I wanted it to make a statement. Right. It, what it colour did you pick? With colour. <laughs> <laughs> Was it... <laughs> We had calf shit. We I don't mean, have sorry. photos. <laughs> Mustard, yellow. Mustard yellow. Mustard yellow. Mustard and yellow, blue. you call it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And bl it looked really Egyptian. It you was know, gorgeous. <laughs> when you're not good at something... We're going to get a JV. You, you, you need a professional. <laughs> Pay for it. And that's one of those things we've learned. It is okay to ask for help. <laughs> and save the marriage too. Okay. <laughs> what else? Obviously, there's a lot to learn about yeah. asset protection and then the yeah. funding that flows from that and how you yeah. do it and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, what yeah. else? Reverse engineering a project great. too. Awesome. Great, great. Yes. See how somebody else did it. Yeah, awesome. Yep. A team, all of the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And listen to Tim. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. That's exactly right. And procrastination through fear. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's – I mean, that, and that's what happened – that's what drove us to this, yeah. to, to, to be here as part of the community was the, mm. well, what do we do? Mm. Where do we go? We've got all, all of these options, but, well, if we do that, it's only going to do this and it's really not an answer. Yeah. Well, if we do this, 
And so you, you're stuck saying, well, if I make this bad decision, I will never get out of the cops. Yeah. <laughs> if I do this, we will never get over that. Yeah. And, and so you start realising that you can't move on without doing something, but you don't know what to do. Yeah. Because that fear of making the wrong decision is what holds you back rather than the, the pride, of the, the excitement of moving on. Mm, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah. And the more we do, the more we can do. Mm, that's right. So, that's exactly right. It's awesome. So your final results have come in here, which is looking rather healthy there, especially from mm. a cash flow perspective. It is. Yeah. It is. And that's, that's what, what we've focused. been trying to that's focus That's what you've on. done. Yeah. 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 So moving, you know, you're looking at... at uh, that doesn't include, obviously, the um, the cabins in there? No. no, no, not yet. So add that on and you, you're just about there from a, a leaving perspective. Yep. Yeah, yep. very good. Okay, so what advice would you give to people starting out? Get out of your box. <laughs> and if there's one person here today that gets something out of our journey so that they don't take the 18 years on the slow back roads and just... Jump on to the Dimpna Way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be happy. I guess the other thing is the, the people in this room are just fantastic. I, I, I mean, it, it, it amazes me just how generous people are with their courtesy, mm -hmm. with their openness, with Help. their approachability, with their offers of assistance. You probably don't get that very often. No. In your job. No, no, <laughs> no, no not a lot. <laughs> That's a massive credit to, to both of them. This weekend, especially because especially for Dan, that sees the the worst in humanity um, in reality with with his work, his his attitude and his ability to look past that and, and continue to move on has been phenomenal. So, you know, the time that I've known him now is um, is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to um, to working with him for longer. And you know, he's going to hit those targets because he can look past that. He's grown and he's taken it on board. So, it's a full mm. credit to the two of them, absolutely. And even Leanne getting up today, <laughs> nervous yesterday, but she's uh, she's taken it on board. So, yeah, absolutely. And I, guess, I mean, I guess that's part of it. Being, standing up here is us getting out of the box because I'm, I'm not a talker. Mm. Uh, this, is, this is not me. <laughs> this is, uh, Doesn't reckon. seem that way to me. <laughs> <laughs> did, did a pretty good job for someone that doesn't like talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've done well. Well, let's give the guys a big round of applause. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. You didn't. You didn't.